Good morning. Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Holy Comforter in Charlotte, North Carolina, where many more people will be seated next Sunday, we hope. There's a bulletin link available in the comment section, and uh, perhaps by now, and in the web page of our, um, of our uh, church. The music is in the hymnal. We'll be singing all verses of all the hymns that are printed today, uh, and we begin on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Our music director, Pro Tem, Jane Aaron. Our organist is Jane Kane. Our uh, cantor today is Paul Malina. Our Chris Bates will be our lector, and our audio technician is Tom Cook. It's, uh, and our vestry person of the day is Ed Gash. It is great to have you with us today. Good morning and welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will speak the hymn of praise together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully, hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have to put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 71. It's page 683 in your Book of Common Prayer. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have given me strength. My praise shall be always of you. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. 
But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me the proverb. Doctor, cure yourself. And you'll say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said to them, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except a widow in Zarephath 
in Sidon. There was also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Please be seated. In our Wednesday Bible study, 4.30 p.m. on Zoom, you all are invited, someone made the point that Archbishop Desmond Tutu had only one sermon, and that it was that God loves you. How awesome is that? It had a thousand different themes, but only one point. God loves you. Bishop Tutu was an amazing man. And now he has found his place among the communion of the saints. I am sure that we will recognize him with a date on the liturgical calendar at an upcoming general convention, that he will find his way into the tome, Holy Women, Holy Men. Perhaps on October 7, the day in 1931 when he was born, but probably not December 26, the day last month where he passed into eternity, There is no way he will push St. Stephen off the calendar. Bishop Tutu, powerful and yet simple. Once when asked to describe the Anglican church, he simply replied, we meet. I can tell you truer words have never been spoken. Just try to wedge your way onto my evening calendar where my nights are often double and sometimes triple booked. We meet sometimes six nights a week. God loves you. It is powerful because it is simple and because it is true, although we often overlook or undervalue that fact. God loves you. I am speaking to you, to be sure. I am also speaking to you, The you that the other you may think is not the you that I am talking about. Each you God loves. Every you God loves. In 1989 in Birmingham, England, the good and simple bishop addressed leaders of different faiths with these words. The accidents of birth and geography determined to a very large extent to what faith we belong. The chances are great that if you were born in Pakistan, you are a Muslim, or a Hindu if you happen to be born in India, or a Shintoist if it is Japan, and a Christian if you were born in Italy. He continues, I don't know what significant fact can be drawn from this, Perhaps that we should not succumb too easily to the temptation to exclusiveness and dogmatic claims to a monopoly of the truth of our particular faith. You could so easily have been an adherent of the faith that you are now denigrating, but for the fact that you were born here rather than there. Wow. Simple, powerful true. Why are you a Christian? Most likely because you were born into a family that practiced a Christian faith in a country where Christianity is, most, is the most widely practiced religion. And God loves you. 
God also loves Muslims and Hindus and Shintoists and Buddhists and Christians and pagans and heathens and agnostics and atheists and Wiccans and even people from Wigan. Because if you are a you, you are the object of God's love. And that must make us happy. Don't let that make you sad or jealous that God loves everyone. People who look like you, people who don't look like you, people who worship like you, people who don't worship like you, and people who don't worship at all. Please don't think poorly on them. Please don't think that they are somehow wrong in how they love God, but instead take consolation in the fact that they probably think the same thing about you. And remember that God loves you. Abide in that love. That's what's happening in today's psalm, a love abiding. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Dang! That is someone who knows that God loves them, and they love that God back. Let's be like that. Let's love the way God loves us. That's the point of the reading from 1 Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. And since God is love, God is patient. And God is kind. Let's swim in that love by being patient and kind ourselves. Because when you are patient and kind... You are love. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. So don't be those things. Be love. Don't insist on your own way. Don't be irritable or resentful because love isn't those things. Love bears, believes, and hopes in all things. Do that too since that's what God does. Corinthians continues, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. Paul echoes the same point made in Jeremiah 1. The Lord said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. To which Jeremiah responded, Ah, oh, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. To which the Lord responded, Don't say I'm only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. You shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Enough with the excuses. Get out there and love. Simply love. Then the Lord will do mighty acts with us when we do. Our love must not be limited to our families, our neighbors, our clan, or even our nation. In Israel in the time of Elijah, in a time of famine, God showed love through a prophet to a woman in Sidon before assisting Israel. In Israel in the time of Elisha, God used someone to cleanse a Syrian in lieu of an Israelite. Because God loves everyone. The first commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. And if we truly and earnestly love God, then we will love what God loves. We will love who God loves. And that is all of you. All of the yous that exist, God loves none more or less than the others. Bishop Tutu is right. His truth is simple and powerful. God loves you. 
If you love God, then I suggest you get busy loving who God loves. Let me quote another theologian, Rick Springfield, when he says, you better love somebody. It's late. You better love somebody. Don't wait. You better love somebody. Don't tempt fate. Because, in the words of Henri Frederick Amiel, because life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. In response, let us stand and share our common faith using the form of the creed printed on page 6 of the service bulletin, page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. For our bishops, Sam and Anne, our presiding bishop, Michael, and for all the clergy and people of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray in thanksgiving for the joys and gifts of life, large and small, remembered and forgotten. We pray and give thanks especially for the altar flowers, which are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Anne Quinlan Simpson Salmons, mother of Mary Kane and her siblings, Mark, David, Amy, and John Salmons. And for those thanksgivings that we now name either aloud or in our heart. We also pray for those named on, in our Facebook prayers today. In thanksgiving for our amazing tech team, prayers for Hetty's uncle, Jean-Marie, who just passed, for Rocky, for our friends in the Diocese of Southwest Florida as they begin the process of choosing their next bishop, and for Father Tim Schenk, who is one of their candidates, for our family members far from us, for our clergy and staff, the Silver Anna Mosley families, for the members of the Young Adult Book Group, for all in the path of the blizzard, for Mary's brother Paul as he prepares for surgery, for Jackie, Alice, Gail, Dennis, and EJ, for Bob, for Jenna, for all struggling with this continued pandemic, that Don's surgeon gives him good news. For Tersh and Trish as he undergoes cancer treatments. For Myra, Michael, and Rye. For Denise. For Bobby. For Flavia. For Bud. For Jeremy and Catalina and Julio Cesar. For Jesus Enrique. We pray for all those in need of our prayers, remembering especially all those who sit in pain, illness, or grief, those in our parish prayer list, and especially the Brady family, Cameron Gray and family, Jenna Brown, Bob Negerson, Bobby Burnett, Suzanne Beckett, and Jack Osborne, and those we now name either aloud or in our hearts for Christopher, for Moon, for Dennis. We pray for those who have died and for those who mourn, for those in our prayer list, and for Mary Jane Brown Pierce. And for all those we now name either aloud or in our hearts. For the soul of Kathy McGeth, In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, to you O Lord, Lord our, our God. God. Gracious God, we ask you to continue to bless the process by which we are calling a new associate rector to share in our mission and ministry. Bless Kat and Lewis as they prepare to join us, as well as those assisting us in the immigration process. Help us to prepare to be her parish family for many years to come. 
for your Son, who makes us all brothers and sisters in his name. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Please share with those around you a sign of God's peace. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome. Is there anybody here that is celebrating a birthday this week that happens to be in our small congregation? Celebrating in our, the life of our congregation this week include Erica Jostin, Emma Ravenburn, Harris Short, Ann Bins, Sarah Blank, Cindy Gash, Sharon England, and Rebecca Hinson. We'll say the collect for birthdays together. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. We have one anniversary that we're celebrating this week, and that is Richard Stutz and Bill Keith. We'll say the anniversary prayer together for them. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, you have created us in your image. Look mercifully upon this couple who comes to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Many happy returns. Please uh, take a moment to check out the uh, Sunday Spirit and or the blast that came out on Thursday. Next week, we will be meeting in person, hopefully. Um, our plan is that you will be able to uh, join with us, and we will have services at 8, 10, and 1230 in Spanish. 8 and 10 in English, 1230 in Spanish. And since we will be celebrating Candlemas, please bring candles. Any candles that you would like to have in your home, uh, blessed for the year, you can bring them at the beginning of the service. We will have them here and bless them during the course of the service. The Bible as it is with Tom Cooper has returned virtually. Eventually that will move back here. I'm not sure if it will be next week, but you can catch the Zoom link uh, in the uh, Blast and Spirit. Imagining with Scripture will take place on February 6th. And there is still opportunity to help out at Room in the Inn, uh, which we will be we are helping out with at Avondale Presbyterian Church. They're hunting for people for this evening for volunteers and for February 6th and 20 and March 20. So I encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, coffee hour, there will be a virtual coffee hour at the end of this service via Zoom. And we are not allowed to eat or drink, so when we meet next week, we will have the opportunity to socialize in Henry Hall, but there will not be food or drink um, offered unless uh, the diocesan and re uh, regulations change. Ed Gash has something that he would like to share with us this morning. Good morning, friends, family, fellow Holy, Holy Comfortites. Uh, my name is Ed Gash, and I am a 39-year member of this wonderful church. <clears throat> the last three years, I've become a, a lover of labyrinths, and I've 
fallen in love with this tool that helps me learn how to fall in love with this thing called grief. And about three years ago, I started a venture of walking all 20 labyrinths here in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. And I started, one of my first ones was the beautiful Charts Labyrinth, 11th Circuit, six pedals in the middle, amazing Wedgwood Labyrinth, where Wedgwood Church used to be, which is now Sharon Academy, West Campus. Uh, I've saw some possible trouble when they sold it to the church, uh, to the school as buildings and debris started getting piled on and near it. But they promised me, as well as they promised the church, that it would remain intact. Well, just like COVID and just like other things, that didn't happen. Um, due to some lack of communication, a subcontractor decided to drive his Bantam bulldozer right onto the labyrinth, totally destroying it and making it unusable. <clears throat> but we have an opportunity. That was in June of last year, and being, me being really ticked off about it, I was persistent in it getting rebuilt. And we have an opportunity starting this Tuesday. We have an artisan from Asheville, North Carolina, Chuck Hunter. He is... This, this labyrinth destroyed is world known now by the World Labyrinth Association. And he will start a two week process beginning this first week in February. And we are in need of wheelbarrows and people to drive those wheelbarrows. <laughs> we are be salvaging bricks from the old, now dead labyrinth to 50 feet away to resurrect a new one. And to me, this is powerful of what we've been going through today. We, we in the labyrinth, the labyrinth is a metaphor in your face. Have we not had bantam unloaders dump all over us? Have we had gravel just tear up our paths that we normally do? So I've, I've, I've replaced the word bam for you just can't make this stuff up anymore. So we have an opportunity here at Holy Comforter to meet there and I'll encourage you if you're interested put it in the chat just the ones I don't want any excuses why you can't do it uh, I, want, I want your phone number in the chat and the good news is about Facebook is I'm sharing it all over the place and I see friends out there that aren't members here so I can come back and troll you <laughs> so if you would uh, sign up if you're interested um, and I'll, I'll give you much more detail this kind of came on at the last second but it's an amazing opportunity to watch a labyrinth being built from scratch. The labyrinth Lazarus theme has helped clean up two lonely labyrinths, but this is the first time we get to take a look at a dead labyrinth and then restore it. And that is much like what the church is going through today, what we in the Pathfinders group are trying to do. So come join us find a new path and help help out. And again, text me or put it in the chat there and I'll come find you. So let's let our, our paths and our lights so shine on others so they can see our good works. Thank you. A day of physical exhaustion can be very spiritually refreshing. I certainly have found that out myself. I enjoy, uh, encourage you to be a part of that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Uh, for those of you that are in the congregation, I will come to you in order to bring you communion.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A as it begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You may stand or kneel for the Eucharistic prayers you prefer and are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave us his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. <coughs> Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, the resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. For you here present and all of you viewing this at home, not able to participate, but in a distant celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We'll add this prayer for those celebrating distance communion. 
in union with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where the sacrament is celebrated this day, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive you in the bread and the wine, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart. Dwell in me, gracious Christ, in the fullness of your strength, in the depth of your peace. Renew my hope, cleanse my body, restore my patience, until by your grace I can receive again in this life or in the life to come. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. communion prayer is that which begins on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal oh, God, God, Heavenly Father, you, you have, have graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.